Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hello everybody. Hello all to our new subscribers. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Today we've got a question from DP Berry. Hello. Hi. DP Berry wants to know, uh, with regard to embalming, mm -hmm. when the vascular system has been compromised, how do you remove the blood? Yeah. So just to preface that. Yeah. When you normally embalm, you use the vascular system. Yep. So the blood will circulate All out the of the body. Yep. The embalming fluid will replace it and everything moves sweetly and swiftly. Yeah, in a massage, the blood will come out of the jugular vein. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's how it's done normally. But if there's been a trauma or an autopsy, so let's say someone's had a gunshot wound to here and it's blown all this area, or they've had an autopsy and the organs have all been removed mm -hmm. and then sampled and tested, put back into the cavity yeah. in here. Obviously, you don't have free access to put something in here and get something out of here and it'll all just happen nicely in a closed system because yeah. there's leaks everywhere. That's true, there's right. leakage. Yeah. So then in that case, if, say, they've had an autopsy and it's all opened up and this has all been cut in here and it's all not attached anymore, mm -hmm. then how do you get, say, the blood out of the arms or the legs? Yeah, good question. And do you have to? Uh, yeah, you do have to uh, clear that blood out of the arms and legs. Why? Uh, why? Because you'll get um, grain in them areas too uh, if you don't clear the blood properly. Uh, and also we really need to make sure that the uh, cavity fluid, uh, sorry, the embalming fluid is actually gone through all of that system in the arms and the legs, you know. So let's start with, so it is a good one, it's an autopsy case. So we've got this whole opening of, um, you know, the uh, everything's severed, the arteries, the veins, the capillaries, everything's gone. So we're going to have no drainage, as in direct drainage from the jugular when we go into the carotid, because we're not just going to go into the carotid, because we can't. It's been compromised, so but we need to clear the blood as well. Obviously, the blood's gone out of the whole cavity area because we've also an autopsy has taken place. So the pathologist that's done that has removed all the organs and everything's been cleaned out of there, so they can do their preliminary uh, investigations and everything's put back inside and sutured up. So you will have blood, obviously, because. The, uh, the arteries and veins and capillaries are severed in um, all your major uh, vessels, so your arms and your legs. So there is blood in sitting, just sitting in the, the cavity, trickling from the arms and the legs. So embalming, when we embalm, we want to clear that blood. And we need to clear the blood because one blood also decomposes and it really smells bad. And that's what starts to decompose the limbs too, is the blood. So we need to clear out as much blood as we possibly can and replace it with the chemical. And we need to replace it with the chemical so we can preserve that limb, the legs and the arms as well, and the head. So, and also we need to get into the cavity area as well, like your back and stuff. You've got nothing there, there's no vessels there. It's, it's all been cut away. So that what, what I would do is when I embalm an autopsy case, it's not just you regular through the um, carotid because we've had all the carotids being severed here. And there's usually no carotid uh, arteries left, especially here in Queensland, Australia, they cut them all away. I know in the US, I have talked to morticians where they actually leave them and they tag them, mm. which is great. So they make them easier to find yeah, for they you. Them, they leave them long and made them easier for the embalmer to do that and tag which ones are carotid and which ones are the vein. So. <laughs> I'm sure we do that here, but they don't they actually just cut it away. So I'm, I'm embalming this right arm and I need to then go into um, inside because we the cavity's open. I've removed all the uh, organs and that's sitting in a container being embalmed in cavity fluid out of the way because we need to embalm the internal organs, but obviously not the normal way. So that's sitting in a container being embalmed, covered in air cavity fluid. So I'm trying to find a vessel in the arm here. The subclavian is the one that's usually left because that's under your, your clap, your, you know, your shoulders here and it's quite deep in here. So I can actually find that subclavian is usually the best one to go in the artery. And it sits, all arteries and veins sit next to each other. So. What I will do, I'll put the cannula in there, um, into the air, 
to the uh, artery here, clamp it on, start pumping my uh, embalming fluid through Using the, the machine. machine. Yep. Turn the machine on. Um, it's usually on a low pulse because I need to, to do this really slowly. And then again, like we do with any uh, massage, any embalming, sorry, is massage. And we, I need to massage with the soapy water, have a, uh, a container of water and massaging from the very fingertips. And I mean, like, mm. if you can describe how mm. I'm doing that, that's quite firm, quite firm. isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So, because that's where you get the purple through your nails. So I'll be squeezing really firmly and pushing the, the blood, blood. Mm. through the uh, capillaries, the veins and everything and up towards the opening where there'll be a lot of veins and capillaries open and the blood will start coming out into the cavity. So it fills the cavity. So as the embalming chemicals coming in, it's pushing that blood out and I'm also helping push that blood out with a massage, but the chemical's doing it itself. But it's only going to embalm this bit because there's nowhere else for the fluid to go. It's not joined to anything else. Because it's not going to embalm underneath here. It's not going to embalm over here. Because the, the holes are basically here, aren't they? Yeah. So it goes in here yeah. and it comes out here. And it comes out here. So and do you wait till comes... you've got clear where the where the blood is coming out, it's cavity fluid? Do you wait that long? Yeah, I do. You usually, well, you can tell as well because the fingers are getting full of, uh, fluid and again you've got to be careful not to over embalm a uh, hand and an arm as well so you don't want too much fluid in but you will start to see that it will start going to pinky colour the blood and you know that's starting to mix with the chemical because it's going to lighter colour because the blood's really really Diluting. dark yep. so it's coming out and as soon as you see that and as soon as you see I'm um, happy with the colour of the hand happy with the amount of fluid in the hand you know you just you know, I'm very happy, and you can see that you've just about got every, you're not going to get every morsel of blood no. out of there, but you're going to get the majority of it out to stop that decomposition, and then we've preserved. And then we know that it's gone into the capillaries, it's gone into the tissues, into everywhere, because it's got to come out into the tissues of the hands, and yet all the blood's now pooled into the cavity. So how do you get it out of the cavity then? So you've done all, both arms, both legs? in yeah. that way so that's what we do with that and the same with the head but the, with the smaller vessels right up there exactly the same so everything's pooling in here um along you lose a lot of embalming um, fluid too yep because it's just pouring out of everywhere right. even though so you actually use a lot more embalming chemicals you use, usually use a couple of tanks because a lot of it, unfortunately, has it just gets wasted because it's coming out. So once you've finished that arm, for example, where you were saying you go mm -hmm. in here and you clamp it off? Uh, you, I, I will tie the artery off, but you can't tie all the vessels off, no. so there's leakage constantly. Okay. But that major one I will tie off because right. it is quite a, a large vessel, so you can. But some, some people don't. They'll they'll not do that. And sometimes I don't um, tie them off because it's going to leak. Anyway. Okay, the cavity's full. Yeah. So what I need to do is I don't wait until I've embalmed the whole body because this cavity is getting full of embalming fluid and blood, which is dangerous for me because even though I've got full PPE on, the fumes are building up in the room because mm, there's a lot sense. of fumes because yep. we've got open access. And when we embalm a body, usually it's closed and sealed and you don't have that amount of fumes, so it can get really strong. In the, it's like having a big tub of embalming fluid just open. sitting there on the table yeah, open. Yeah, yeah, so it's in the air. So, we, so I use my trocar, um, it, what we cavity aspirate with, because I won't be cavity aspirating, but the trocar have a different fitting. I've got a different end. So you know how we have the pointy trocar? We've got one that has, it's like a little rounded, end and it's a bit like shower nozzle yeah like that but sealed so what that does is draws just the fluid out so put that inside the cavity and that just takes out all of the fluid just because I don't want a pointy thing I don't want anything pointy I want a nice soft you know finish so this can sit in the cavity and draw all of that blood and all of that excess fluid out and that does that and that just draws it out so it's basically aspirating so you empty it as much as you can then you go on constantly, to the next arm yeah yep. constantly emptying it then we go to the next arm empty each leg do the same empty 
when we're doing the head empty again. So it's constant. You've got to keep on top mm -hmm. of clearing that cavity all of the time. So yeah. Okay. So not next question. Just to go a bit further for you, DP Berry. Uh, say you can't get into the artery at all. Mm -hmm. Say you've got to do it hypodermically. Mm -hmm. you, so you're embalming hypodermically. Mm -hmm. We'll take the arm as an example. So you've right. got a, a, a hypodermic this arm because the arteries are all messed up. You can't use them can't at all. Can't use them right? at all. Yeah. How do you get the blood out then? Okay, it's again, it's massage. Okay. Because everything's damaged, everything's damaged. So the if the R is damaged, best bet the veins are probably damaged too. So as you're hypodermic in the whole arm, which is a lot of work, internal and external, and in between the fingers and through the edge of the fingers, you know, and you've got your hypodermic needles, which can be this long and then this big, depending where you are. If you're doing the fingers, you've just got a little needle. If you're doing like internally, you've got your big hypodermic needle that will go down. Um, but as I've hypo, I will then massage and massage, and it's exactly the same. But hypo work's not really going to move it. It will move it a bit, but it's down to massage. It's the massage. It's the, mm. having the uh, soapy water and just with your cloth and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And it's quite uh, exhausting as well because it's it takes a long time and it's physical and it. You know, you've got to be quite firm. And of course, if you've got somebody that's got skin slip or decomposing a bit, you've still got to be firm, but gentle. But gentle. Mm. And obviously where you've got skin slip, embalmer will start to firm that up eventually anyway, but you've still got to try and get rid of as much blood. You will not get rid of much as much as you do uh, uh, arterial. Arterial is always the best. Hypodermic is the last resort. But if you've got nothing else to work with, that's what you have to do. So There you yeah. go, DP Berry. So, There's your answer. Great question. Thanks, Trace. Yes. No. Well explained. Yes. Anyone else got any questions about that? Let us know. Yes, please. Yeah. And uh, hello to all our new members. Yes, yes. thank you for joining us. Uh, we love us. to hear from you. And um, Tracy's always on to your comments, trying to get on first because... Crip members and um, and actually all of our members all have got members priority, priority messaging. Yeah. And uh, the Crip members get special little behind the scenes videos and yep. little extra videos throughout the week yep. when Tracy has something interesting to tell them or if we're off doing something together. Yep. So a little bit of behind the scenes stuff um, for them. Yes, so um, if good. you want to have a look at that, there's a join button down below here and that just supports us too in helping us bring these videos to you to buy equipment and that sort of thing yeah. so if you'd like to support us that's how you can do it Yay. and we'll thank you by sending you a little bit of extra insight and answering your questions as a priority yes we do yes it's great thanks thank for you. joining us everybody yeah till next you. time stay safe take care bye bye bye